Hi guys, this is the part 7 of this tutorial for beginners about drawing a floor plan. In this part we will learn how to insert dimension lines and I also want to show you some tips. But before proceeding I want to discuss something about the colors. In this floor plan I use some light colors because they are easier to see in the dark workspace. However, if I print this drawing some of the objects will be too light as you can see here in the layout mode. So, what we need to do is to set up a different color for each viewport. I'm going to double click inside the viewport to switch to the model space. Then, if I go to the layer properties and scroll the bar to the right, I can see here the VP color, which means viewport color. I click in the color of the viewport for the furniture layer, Change to this dark blue and I can see the objects easily now. Basically for each layer I can have a color for the model space and a different color for each viewport. Now we are going to learn to insert dimensions in AutoCAD. But before I want to create a separate layer for them. Like we did for the doors the windows, stairs and also the viewport. Go to the layer properties manager, click with the right button, create a new layer and name it dimensions. Now I choose a color, for example this light green. Of course in the paper we are going to put this darker. Now I want to show you a useful tip. I'm going to type with the keyboard dim layer. This is a system variable that specifies a default layer for the dimension lines. I press enter and I'm going to type the name of the layer I want to place all the dimensions. I'm going to type dimensions and press enter. Instead, if I would write the name that doesn't exist yet in my layer list, it still works as it creates a new layer for it automatically. Now let's see how to insert a new dimension line. I have to click in the tab annotate in the ribbon and there you can see the dimension panel. Ok, before inserting a dimension line we should set up them. Click in this arrow to access the dimension style manager. Now. There are two types of dimension lines, annotative dimensions and standard dimensions, but we are going to see the difference after. For now, let's use annotative dimensions. I can select the first style and the symbol before indicates the dimensions here are annotative. Before continue, I want to change the name here to annotative meters, just to remember the units I'm using in this file, you will understand. Now I'm going to click in modify and in this window we can edit all the sizes regarding lines, arrows, tags and units. For the dimension lines of course. But what means exactly annotative dimensions? All the sizes I specify here are actually the sizes of the dimension lines in the paper. For example if I want in the PDF the text height to be 2 millimeters. I have to insert here 0.002 because in this drawing I'm using meters. This is very important. Ok, as by default in AutoCAD all these annotative dimensions are imagined to be in millimeters, I'm going to divide all the lengths by 1000. For example, as these distances are in meters, this in a paper will be too much for sure so we have to change them. Then we do the same for all the lengths in the other tabs. Of course, then you can adjust these parameters as you prefer. And if you want to learn more about dimension styles, click in the card that appears above. The text height, exceptionally I want it as 1.5 mm, but if you think it's too small you can increase it. It's ok. Once I finish I click in OK. 
and close the damage style manager. Finally, we can insert a dimension line. It's simple. Click in this arrow, and here you can see several ways of inserting dimension lines. We are going to click in the first one, linear dimension. But before, for annotative dimensions, we have to set up the scale. And this has to be the same scale of a viewport that I want my dimensions to appear. So I put the scale 1 per 200, and I can click for the first point and the second point. And here you have a dimension line. It's very simple. One thing, this M that appears here, it's a suffix I insert in the primary units. If I don't want it, don't put nothing. To draw another dimension line, right on the left, I can click in the icon continue and it does it automatically. I just need to click for the second point. And you see it keeps drawing dimension lines until I press escape. To draw the dimension of this entire wall, it's basically the same as before. I click in both points, move up the mouse and click for example there. Let's see another tip. Here I want to increase the baselines of these four dimension lines. Because they are continued dimensions, if I click in a stretch point between two dimension lines, I can stretch both of them. Instead, if I click in the text, I can simply move it away without interfering with the lines. Now, this wall is diagonal. And if I insert a linear dimension, this is what happens. I draw it between these two points. And you can see that it's measuring the vertical distance in the y-axis. But it's not what I want, because I want this, the length of the line. That means, instead of inserting a linear dimension, I have to click in a line. Then you will see that this measures the actual line length. Ok, now that you know how to draw annotative dimension lines, I'm going to make the layout for the details of the door and the window. As you see, I'm using here two viewports. So, going back to the layout of the floor plan, I am going to duplicate it. I click here with the right button and then go to Move or Copy. In this window I choose Layout 1 and Create a Copy. Click OK then. Here you have the new one. I'm going to move it to the right and to change the name I can double click on it. I type Details for example. Now I'm going back to the model space and in this new layout what I want is this door and this window. The current viewport, I'm going to double click on it to go to the model, move the drawing to the right until I find the door. Then I can zoom until I find an appropriate scale for it. After I'll go to the scale tab and choose a more accurate value. For this proportion, I can try 1 per 16 and it looks good. Now I double click outside to exit the model space, click in the viewport and then I can click in this base point to shrink the viewport in this direction. Then I press escape. So as you imagine, in a paper I can create how many viewports as I want. So I go again to the Layout tab on the ribbon and create a new viewport as I showed you in the previous video. I'm going to hover the mouse in this endpoint in order to have the upper edges aligned. It's more beautiful. Now, uh, let's uh, find the window. Doing the same process as before, I specify the same scale as the door, 1 per 16, uh, 
it's a bit small, so maybe a larger scale suits better here. Let's choose 1 per 10. Yes, I prefer this one. Ok, now I want to put annotative dimensions for both drawings. In the annotative panel, I'm going to click in this icon to insert a linear dimension, but first make sure I am in this style, annotative meters. After clicking, as I haven't changed the scale, this message appears, because I should insert the annotative dimensions in the scale of each viewport. So, for the door, I'm going to choose 1 per 16. Then I can insert the dimension lines in this way. Once I finish, I can do the same for the window, and this time its scale is 1 per 10. Here. Insert the dimension lines in the same way as for the doors. I finished and finally I can go to the layout of the details. Ok, the colors are a bit hard to see, let's change them. Double click in the viewport, go to the layer properties and again in the viewport color change to a darker one. I choose this one. I am also memorizing the reference color because I want to use the same for the window. I double click in the next viewport and I change the color of the dimensions layer to 86, which is the reference of the previous color. You see, now they are the same and they are darker, good to print. Now a last thing. Look to both viewports. Their drawings are in different scales, but the dimension lines have the same sizes. For example, when I specify the text height in the Dimension Style Manager, this 1.5mm is exactly the size that is printed in the paper. Ok, it was all in this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned things here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet, and if you desire of course. And see you soon in the next video. So thank you very much for watching, bye!